let me show you guys a very quick node setup to make your textured models go from this to this. Let's go over to the shading tab. This is going to be really quick, okay? The first thing we're going to do over here is we're going to add in a bump node, okay? So let's add a bump node right there, and we're going to plug in the color from our texture node into the height of that bump node right there, okay? And then we're just going to plug the normal into the normal of the principal node, and you can already see that the texture is now turned into somewhat of a height map. You can see that these cracks and these uh, dents that I have on my texture are suddenly so much deeper than than they are without the normal map, right, or the height map. And I, we want to tweak the settings here a little bit. We want to set the strength to something like 0 0.4 and the distance to about 0 0.3 because I don't want my cuts and my dents here to be too deep, but I want them to be noticeable. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a roughness map to make our metal look a lot more realistic. Okay, now it's a little bit too smooth. We're going to make it so it looks a little bit more like real metal. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add in a noise texture. Let's add a noise texture right there. And also, let's just add a color ramp right next to that. Okay, so let's plug the color from the noise texture into the factor of the color ramp. And we're going to uh, plug the color from the color ramp into the roughness of our principal node. All right. And now, first of all, this kind of creates a cloudy texture for the roughness map. You can't even see it right now, all right? But if we turn up the scale to something like 15 on our noise texture, you can see now the, uh, the texture is a little bit more visible, but it's still not the look that we want, okay? We're going to add the detail. We're going to turn that to 8, and we're going to set the roughness to something like 0 0.8, okay? And now you can see a bit of a, a, te a different texture on the surface over here, but we're still going to play around with the color map to make that look a little bit more realistic. So let's place our black marker to something about 0 0.35. You can even type that in. I, I figured it's something like 0 0.35 works the best. And we're also going to set the white marker to something around 0 0.92. Okay. And now this looks a lot shinier than before. You can see that it's a lot more uh, specular. But at the same time, it has a kind of metallic look on the surface. And you can also play around with some of the settings here if you want. You can increase the detail to make this look a little bit more uh, realistic. Maybe maybe it's going to work better on your model if you increase some of these settings and play around with them a little more. But for me, something like this is it, it works just fine for, for this demonstration. Okay, and then we're also going to go ahead and create a very simple specular map. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're just going to manipulate this turret texture right here, this texture node right here, so that the colors declare the specularity of the different parts of the turret. Okay, so let's just add a brightness contrast node a bright contrast node right there and we're going to plug in the color from our texture node into the color of the brightness and contrast node and now we're going to plug that color into our specular and then right off the bat when we plug that in we can't really see any difference okay so that's because we have to manipulate the texture first because the, the way a specular map works is the the, the colors the brightness uh, of the color in the in the texture here declares how shiny or how not shiny a certain part of that texture is so we can, we can change that by increasing the contrast here. So we're going to set that to something like 2.5 or 2.6. And then now it just becomes completely uh, completely rough and uh, it's not shiny at all. But we're also going to increase the brightness a little bit. We're going to set that to something like 0 0.75. And now when you look at the texture, you can see that the dents here and the scratches are not really shiny, while the rest of the paint, which is still uh, quite smooth, is a lot shinier. You can, you can check the, the effect of that by unplugging this brightness contrast node. You see, now everything is quite a bit more shiny, or it's pretty much the same exact specularity on this part as it is on that part. But when we plug this in, it becomes a little bit of a difference, and it looks a little bit more realistic. And you can play around with these settings and see what works best for you. Maybe you're going to want some deeper cuts. You can increase the bump map right here, or maybe you can change some of the settings on your, uh, on your noise texture and make this uh, look a little bit better or look a little bit more or less shiny. But uh, just play around with these nodes and you can make your metals look a lot more realistic uh, if you find the right combination for your model. Now guys, if you like this model that you see right here, I have a couple of tutorials on how I made this thing, how I textured it and how I animated it and rigged it. So if you want to learn anything about making tanks in Blender, do check out my channel because I have a whole lot of videos about that. But thanks for watching and I hope to see you around.